Welcome to the Tony Gaskin Show, best-selling author, celebrity life coach, and international speaker. The purpose of this show is to bring you motivation, inspiration, and education in the areas of life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Talks with Tony. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you are hearing this at. Make sure you hit subscribe or set your notifications because we got more coming for you. And remember, if you have a question, send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. The question of today is, hello, hoping you can help me. I've been dating this guy for six months and got pregnant on birth control. From the beginning of the relationship, I told him I didn't want any more kids unless I was married and my husband really wanted one. So when I found this out, I was crying, scared, nervous. But when I told him, he was super excited. He told me everything would be fine and he'd stay by my side. I believed him because he's never given me a reason not to. Two weekends ago, I let him meet my 10-year-old and my 2-year-old. May sound crazy, but I usually wait a year for anyone to meet my kids because I don't want them getting attached. Everything went well. He even thanked me for showing him what it's like to be a family. Saturday night, though, we were at the hotel. We were in his hometown for his nephew's birthday, and he was drinking with his family in his sister's room with all her friends, too, one of which I felt he entertained a little too much. My boys were getting tired, so I took them back to the room to put them to bed. He didn't come back to the room until 1 a.m., Am I crazy and overreacting for thinking this is not okay? When I said something to him, he broke up with me the next day saying he can't be with someone who doesn't trust him. I'm extremely hurt and bothered by this. How can you love someone one day and the next day end the relationship? Now I'm stuck pregnant and alone and have no idea how to get through this, especially when I didn't want another child now. I know God works in mysterious ways and everything happens for a reason, but why all this? And to make matters worse, my 10-year-old really liked him and asked where he is every day. Maybe by now, by the time I'm getting to this question because you sent it in, you know, a little while ago, maybe by now you all have hashed it out, you've worked through it. But even if that's the case, I want to share my perspective on it, you know, coming from the male perspective. For one, I want you to understand you got pregnant within six months. To be honest with you, so this guy must be like very handsome to you or very charming or something, but it's a, it's a lot going on here that you really, as a woman, you got to sit down with yourself and you got to check yourself. You got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to say, hold on. You know, what am, what am I doing? I'm a grown behind woman and I'm pregnant inside of six months and I'm on birth control. For one, that birth control cheap and raggedy. So you might have to get Blue Cross Blue Shield so you can check on that birth control. Because if you're going to continue to have sex in your life, you want to make sure you're using the right product for one. For two, I heard you say God works in mysterious ways at the end. God really doesn't have anything to do with this because God is is holy. You know, sits on high, looks low. But when you're living in sin, meaning having sex before marriage, God kind of got to, he got to step back a little bit because you can't really hear him. You can't hear him because you're caught up in some mess right now. So, I don't think this is God's work. You know, this is your work. This is your work, and this is the results of your work. So what you have to do as a woman, and this is for people in general, and then don't just lock this into this one situation. Look at this in your life in general. Is what you doing lining up with what you say you want? So if you say you don't want any kids, then why are you having sex? And if you say you don't want to introduce a man to your kids inside of 12 months, 
then why are you having sex inside of 12 months? Because there's no guarantee that the relationship is going to work. And if you got pregnant inside of six months on birth control, when did you start having sex? Because did you get pregnant off of, you know, a one hit or quitter, you know, a one shot? I mean, he shoot better than Steph Curry win the game on the line. So you have to think about this thing now. And so if you're starting in month one or month two or month three, or even if you started in month six, y'all have been dating for six months. It takes six months just to get to know somebody to see if they if they are fake or phony. But y'all having sex and now you're pregnant. And so what's happening is, is you're having unprotected sex. And you have two kids already. So you have an unprotected sex. So you're not only putting yourself at risk to get pregnant, which you did, but you're also putting yourself at risk to catch one of these diseases that are flying around like flies. Diseases are flying around right now. They are flying off the shelf. 50% of people, you know, is pretty much that that singles out here sleeping around have had some type of sexually transmitted disease. And a lot of people are carrying, you know, the herpes virus. So it's serious out here. and You can't just lay down all willy nilly because now here you are six months into dating and he's already broken up with you. So if you look at this and now, so now you have a lifetime gift for six months worth of dating now hopefully y'all have worked this thing out um, and trying to you know get through it but i want you to just think about this and i and i'm and i'm giving it to you you know real and raw because i really want you to really look yourself in the mirror and say you know what am i doing now you got a blessing out of it because we have to see our kids as a blessing this child is a lesson and a blessing and you might need to name the child blessing whether it's a boy or a girl because it's a lesson and a blessing and I want you to really ask yourself you know did I do this to myself and after you accept responsibility for it and say okay if after this I've learned my lesson no man from moving forward no man is getting these cookies unless he's my husband. So it's not just about I'm not having kids unless he's my husband and he really wants kids. I'm not having sex unless it's my husband un until I'm married. So make that decision. The other side of it is, yes, you were overreacting. He came in the room at 1 a.m. That's early when you are out of town and everybody's in a hotel room, and he's in the room with his sister. So he's in the room with his sister. They're drinking. So you date a man that drinks. So if you know he's going to be drinking, you're drinking, you're having a good time, and you're with your family, and you had to go out of town and get a hotel, that means you don't see that family often. I mean, you're lucky that it was 1 and not 3 a.m., I mean, me personally, I probably could have been in my sister's room laughing, talking, you know, having a good time to 2 or 3 a.m. So you were a little lonely. You were lonely and you were thinking so much because he was entertaining that female and you didn't know how he had ramped up this entertainment. And he was in there doing a stand up comedy routine while you were back in the room with your boy. So now your life went from a hundred from a hundred to zero, it got real mummified, real boring while he was still on the turn up having a good time. So all of that, so you're counting every little minute. So that's why that one AM felt so late. But he's you know, he's with his family. He's catching up. You know, he's catching up with his family. And yes, in this early in the relationship, you do have to show some security. You gotta show some security. You gotta show you know, some confidence and you got to know who you are. You got to know what you bring to the table and your mindset in relationships. We have to think like I'm the baddest thing since sliced bread. 
Like, if you crazy enough to cheat on me, you out your mind. You out your mind, and I'm out of here. Good riddance. This your loss. Of course, yours is going to be a little tougher because now you're carrying his child. So the next day, he breaks up with you. Now, I'm pretty sure by this time, y'all back talking, y'all back together. I'm pretty sure. And I honestly believe him breaking up with you was to train you. So what he was doing, he went to the furthest extent that he can go to train you. Because what it would do is show you and tell you that if I will dump you while you are carrying my child, and I'm dumping you because you questioned me about coming in at 1 a.m. Stay in your place. So he's tr- he's trying to train you. That's all he's doing. He's trying to train you. And you have to make the decision. Because if you really have a problem with him coming back at 1 a.m., okay. Then that's the problem. And, and he's going to have to show respect. You know, he's going to have to show respect. Now, if he was, if y'all back in y'all city where you live and he's coming in 1 a.m. And, you know, y'all living together at some point, and he's coming in 1 a.m. every night or two, three nights, then that's totally different. That's that's a totally different thing. But when you're with family, you know, it, it's a little, a little drastic. It's not like he was out at the club or at the strip club or out with his boys and they were out in a, another room with his boys and some females that aren't related to him, but he was in a room with his sister and her friends and you were in the room. So the women see that you are there. So even if he is trying to flirt and be cute and be funny, they're still looking at him like he's crazy. Like he got a third eye in the middle of his forehead. Cause they're like your woman here and you're a stepdad. So chill. So they're looking at him like that. So he really doesn't have any game that he can really exercise at this little get together. So you have to think about it like that and not let your insecurities take over and start to speak. And this goes across the board to everybody listening. Think about your insecurities and are you allowing your insecurities to speak? Think about the way you value yourself and do you know your worth and what you bring to the table? The other thing is remember to ask yourself, do my actions line up with my words? Is what is what's coming out of my mouth line up with what I'm doing with my time or with my body or with my mind? So ask yourself those questions because in anything in life, like I always say, you can't have a filet mignon lifestyle if you got hot dog habits. So if you just, you know, watching reality TV and going to the club, You're not going to own your own business and be highly successful because that's going to take some drive and some focus. So if you don't want to keep, you know, popping out kids, then you can't keep lying down having unprotected sex. If you want to be married and have a husband and have a stepfather for your kids, then you can't give all of you to a man in six months. So think about these things, check yourself and then check him and let him know like, look, okay, maybe I, you know, was a little drastic, but you really broke up with me over questioning you over coming in at 1 a.m. versus explaining yourself to me, explaining yourself to me and explaining your side of it and allowing me to see your side of it. So it sounds to me as if, you're a runner, and any time you're confronted, you're just going to run. So is this your habit? And and as you ladies, this is how you got to talk to your man. You're not yelling. You're not cursing. You're not calling him out his name, but you have to talk room tone but straightforward and direct. What happened with a lot of women when you're trying to get a point across, you start to yell, your voice gets a little high, or you start to curse or you start to cry, or you start breathing hard, things change. So any little change, it throws him off and he can no longer hear you. No, you got to be cool, calm, and collected. You got to come direct, live in effect. You got to be able to look him in the eye, sit down face to face, and have a real conversation. Let him feel you. 
because you are cool, calm, and collected. You know, you see the movies, some the, the most ruthless killers are calm, like like Liam Neeson in, in all his movies and in Taken. He's calm. He Get on that phone. I will find you, and I will kill you. Now, if he was on the phone, look here, what are you going to do? Hey, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Screaming and yelling. People are like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But when you serious, when you direct, when you're having a cool, calm, collected conversation, every word that comes out of your mouth, it's easier to be understood. So you got to, in your relationship, you got to check your partner. And when they do things that are showing signs that can blow up and be a big problem later, you got to check it right then and there. Hey, thank you so much for that question. I know a lot of times you all will send in some questions and you may get an answer you were not expecting to hear, but I call it straight down the middle. Contrary to popular belief of the men that think I'm always taking the woman's side, I call it like I see it. You know, I'm an umpire. I call it like I see it. I'm no guru. This is just my opinion. You got to weigh it with your heart. I'm just your brother from another mother sharing my perspective because sometimes your friends and your real family might lie to you because they got to see you every day. But me, I, I don't have anything against telling you the unbiased truth. So thank you so much for submitting your question. If you have a question, remember, send it to inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Inbox at TonyGaskins.com. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk soon.